Hi, this is Mingyao from OZ Engineering, and in this video, I'll be looking at how to set up a shape memory alloy night null type of simulation using ANSYS Workbench. Today, we're going to use the shape memory model. So, I've done a previous simulation, uh, a video with uh, Super Elastic. And the idea here is that the Super Elastic model allows models a very stretchy metal structure in 3D. And uh, it's for super elasticity only. The shape memory actually combines the effect of temperature change. So we can model temperature change and shape memory effects of uh, the shape memory alloy. It also has the ability to include things like plasticity and a variety of other phenomena. There's actually two separate shape memory effect models. So I'm going to uh, create a, a night null model and put in the shape memory material properties. You can see similar to super elasticity we need Young's modulus which uh, I'm going to switch to millimeters kilograms here and say 60,000 and the Poisson's ratio of 0 0.36. Uh, the shape memory option allows us to specify Martin side modulus so for now I'm going to specify the same one. And then there are a number of other parameters. There's a hardening parameter reference temperature, elastic limit, temperature scaling parameter, maximum transformation strain, and load dependency parameter. So we can convert some of our the information we have from our test data into this by looking into help. Uh, on the SS Learning Hub, we have this handy little chart that allows to specify the, uh, the, the hardening uh, parameter, uh, there's an R, there's a beta. Let me look up um, uh, the reference temperature. E is the elastic limit, and then we have things like R and beta. And this 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 uh, describes all of it. So R is the elastic limit, and we have an equation for that. Temperature scaling parameter is beta, and then maximum transformation strain and a load dependency parameter which defines the difference between uh, compression and tension. So let's set that to zero and get working on this. So the first value is H which is our um, hardening parameter. And I've done the calculation so this works out to something like uh, 933 megapascals. Uh, for the Temper reference temperature, I'm going to set this to room temperature. We're not going to actually model the temperature effect, although we could certainly do that. Uh, instead, we're, going to just, we're just going to run this as a, a super elastic type of material, just to compare. Elastic limit. Okay, too many things on the screen here. Here, the elastic limit is... Uh, I have a calculator over here, so I'm just going to copy it in is uh, 122 megapascals. Temperature scaling parameter is 20. And uh, maximum transformation strain 0 0.086. So if we go through the documentation, you can see this is the transformation strain. We have the value uh, here and we're trying to calculate what the uh, EL is here. Um, H is the hardening parameter. We have the elastic limit which is calculated as this value and beta is the temperature uh, scaling parameter. Here I calculated this to be 20 and the tricky thing here is that there is the 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 uh, you need a temperature here so you need to have some sort of temperature change in this model. So we can put in the information into this table here and we can go ahead and set up our simulation. One of the big benefits of the, the shape memory effect uh, model in, in addition to super elastic is that it allows us to simulate uh, beam elements. So we can treat our night null as a night null wire with uh, some defined cross section instead of modeling it in full 3D. And this can obviously dramatically reduce the computational cost of our simulation. So I can suppress this. Now I have a beam. 
and I can select our night null as a beam. The cross section, this was extracted from the uh, uh, this is extracted from using as a space claim and when we mesh the beam it's just a beam element. So this can make very large complex night null structures much much faster and easier to simulate. Uh, I'm going to assign a fixed support here and I'm actually also going to insert a uh, fixed rotation so the rotation of degrees of freedom doesn't move here. I'm going to have uh, four steps here. Auto time stepping is on. I'm going to have 20. Actually I'm going to select all four steps otherwise it only assigns to the first one here. So we'll do 20, 20, and Again, we're going to leave a uh, large reflection off, otherwise we get uh, linear buckling, I mean non-linear buckling effects when we try to do the compression. So one side is a fixed support, the other side is going to be a displacement. And we're going to set X and Z to 0, and this to, uh, we're going to pull out to 2, go take it back to 0, pull it out to, compress it to minus 2, and set this to zero. So it's going to be tension and compression and we're going to try to generate the same kind of curve. So if we look at the progress here, it's a, it's a beam model so it works very fast. And we have our deformation. Oh, looks like I, I did the wrong displacement. Uh, that should be tabular. All of this should be zeros. And this should be 2, minus 2, 0, 0. Okay, let's try that again. Instead of compression tension, I'm moving it up and down. Okay, let's take a look at the deformation. So this is a highly exaggerated, so it's showing us pulling it in, compressing it out. It, it's greatly exaggerating the amount of displacement, so maybe this is better. So that's, that's real, real distance. Uh, doing the same thing, we can plot the force reaction on the displacement. And if I show deformation, let's say force and displacement. And we plot the chart here. So the x-axis will be our y displacement. And we're going to omit all of these things and leave only y force on display. We have a similar type of uh, model as we had before. We have a transformation and then it's pure, completely symmetric. This has pretty good documentation on this memory, uh, shape memory model, shape memory effect model in the ANSYS Learning Hub. So if you need the documentation, the training material, that is available. So to show the, the memory effect side here, we have a temperature of 22 degrees as a reference temperature. Now let's see what happens when we heat this whole thing up to 40 degrees. Okay, you can see the the the, the phase uh, changes have shifted further away from the center. Now, if I set this to 100 degrees, and we can uh, we don't have to hold it as a constant temperature, so we can choose to cy choose to cycle the temperature, right? We can have the pull the wire at 100 degrees, and then uh, compress it at 20 degrees and we can see how all of these changes will affect our results. Okay, so that's at 100 degrees. Now let's let's mess around with the temperature a little bit. 
So we go to 40, maybe 50 degrees. Then we drop it down to 20 and 20. Let's see how this looks. Okay, you can see the changes that are very different now because we're changing the temperature as, along with our uh, pulling and pushing the, uh, the beam. So that's a quick demonstration of the, of the shape memory effect uh, in ANSYS. I want to bring up the help uh, briefly here. So in ANSYS help, if we look for shape memory alloy, And go here. You can see there's a super elastic model and a shape memory app model. There's also a plasticity model which goes with the shape memory model. If we go to the shape memory section, there's a section of constitutive models and how it's set. And the, this is the shape memory settings, uh, shape memory effect options that we've used. The, one of the challenges for this is that it does assume that the, the transformation uh, stress, the, the stiffness, when it transform, transforms from austenite to martensite and reverse is the same. Now when people test these uh, night null models out, uh, sometimes you have different curves in different areas. So this is a, an assumption that's, made, that's inherent in the shape memory effect. It does allow you to run large models much faster in the form of beam elements. But there is an even more advanced shape memory effect model with plasticity. And this now includes the super elasticity, which is the, the first part, the same shape memory effect, and as well as a temperature transformation and, and uh, plastic yielding. So there's thermal strain, transformation strain, and plastic strain all added together. This model is available and it includes almost every characteristic you can you would ever want for a shape memory alloy, including uh, plastic phase yielding response, uh, tension compression asymmetry response, smoothing behavior for uh, hardening function. Uh, there is an option for limiting transformation stress strain temperature. So if we do decide to use a model like this, all of a sudden we have even more material properties to, to define. So the more advanced version of the shape memory alloy allows you to do plasticity, night null plasticity um, here, right? Plastic yield for austenite, yield uh, isotropic plastic yield saturation point for austenite and martensite. Um, and this, this, I'll have to leave this section for another day because matching this model to experimental data can be fairly challenging, whereas matching models up here experimentally, if you uh, analyze it on a simple beam element like I, I did here, it's pretty straightforward to do. So that's all I wanted to show for shape memory alloy uh, model in ASIS. Uh, obviously a big benefit here is taking into account temperature changes as well as looking at uh, the transformation, uh, also modeling beam elements. Uh, hopefully this helps. If you have any, uh, if you're interested, if these vi videos are of interest to you, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, uh, there is a lot of material available in the ASIS Learning Hub. We, and uh, if you need software or simulation services, please contact us at ozinc.com. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.